Hi, everybody. Afternoon Path Chat covering equities, March 21st. This is Bob Iacchino along with Mike Arnold from Path Trading Partners. Normally, when we're doing stocks like this, I like to kind of give the list of the stocks and say what city they're in and what they do. And But uh, this is all replays. There's no new ones on what Mike's about to do. So I just want to take a second and kind of talk to you guys after we had our first down 1% day in basically five months. The 110 straight days without a 1% down day for the S&P and Dow are over. And so obviously a lot of the stocks, most of which we've been short, have uh, gone our way. So it's a pretty good day for us. And I had a lot of people asking me why it happened today. And one of the teaching moments we like to take advantage of is saying, why do you care? When you're in price action trading, when that's what you do is price action trading, you don't care why something happens. You only care what happens. I was watching a very popular guy on TV today, just a little while ago, actually. And he was going through all kinds of crazy reasons why the market may be down. He even said the words, oil won't always be leading, but right now it is. So you have to pay attention to that. And sometimes the Baltic freight index shows weakness in China and pushes the market lower. And other times it's the dollar. Actually, the dollar hasn't been that weak lately, if you look at it. Um, it's only had five down days out of 10, although the down days were larger. But he's pointing to all kinds of things because... From a behavioral economics perspective, people like to know why. Why doesn't matter when you trade price action. And it's the only calm way, in my opinion, to trade. Today was only 1%. We've seen hundreds and thousands of down 1% days in the market. And they don't mean that it's crashing. They also don't necessarily mean that it won't crash. All we react to when we trade is what happened. And you'll see it when Mike shows you the charts. Now. Some people want to mix fundamentals into their trading. I obviously am the fundamental guy between me and Mike. That's sort of my role here. But we don't trade it. It's informational. It's educational. And quite frankly, it's a little bit of a hobby. So I'm going to turn it over to Mike to show you what happened and what we will do next based on what happened today. Mike, it's all yours. Okay, great. Thank you very much, Bob. That was an excellent introduction. I'm going to cover stocks in this one, and then we'll do another futures one to cover what happened in the futures and all the other markets. I'm just going to run through our list. Citibank. Banks were down pretty big. Citibank's been on a radar screen. It's not close to triggering, but I am watching for this massive potential still double top. If we do get all the way down eventually below the 55.23, if this sell-off continues into a bigger sell-off and banks continue to pull back, we could see a substantial pullback in Citibank. MNTX, which was a variation on a trend line play, which we're looking for a close of up 837 on a weekly basis, which we did not get. Still in play, it has not hit the level which the play would not be valid anymore, but it has pulled back. Amazon, I'm not even counting on this being a potential double top. It's just interesting. I'm going to watch where Amazon pulls back to, and then we'll do some new analysis at some point on that to see if we can project some higher prices or a good place to buy or what's going on. Yelp, still a valid weekly potential double top. Again, just edged down a little bit. NRG, a confirmed double bottom, but not triggered yet. NVIDIA, which we saw this was a lower probability because the rotation zone was in the way. It did not hit the stop levels yet. It just pulled back a bit, not much, as much as a lot of other stocks did. So we're going to just keep an eye on this. Again, if it closes beyond 112.12 or trades through 114.72, that would be a stop out. Now, if it does get back down and this or 21 EMA is out of the way, it could be a pretty good trade. Log me in. Again, one, two, three, two weeks up, one week just pretty flat. Now it's going back down below what triggered the entry, not the price level that tr exactly triggered the entry, but below the base. So keep watching for that one. VMC going towards the level that will lower our stop. 112.10 is where we will lower our stop. 
and I can tell you I'll have to work out the levels, but it's going to be somewhere right above this high that came in. FCX, not even going to pronounce it because Bob will make fun of me. Pretty much just sideways today. Well, copper was weaker, gold was stronger, silver was stronger, so it, and it was pretty neutral. Tesla. This came down to a break-even stop after hitting the first target. That double is now done. So that's coming off. I'm not taking Tesla off the chart yet. We may have a trend line trade coming up. If it breaks this trend line, it's going to pretty much target around the 243 level would be the target, but it's really important if it gets below this 243 level on a closing basis, we could see a larger correction down. So we'll keep watching for that. SEAS, this may end up triggering this week. You know, it's really below the base and it's now below the 21. Keep an eye on that one. FNSR triggered a couple weeks ago. Last week just stayed above the trigger point. Now it's still above the trigger point, but turned back down. ARCB triggered two weeks ago. Now it's testing the 50-week exponential. Our stop level to reduce the stop is 2435. KAMN, just moving nowhere near the stop reduction point, but breaking down further. This has not been entered yet. So this may be an entry this week. KAI, big up week last week, big reversal so far this week. So for everybody who is nervous on this one, we have to just let them play out. You can't live candle by candle. This week triggered it. This week, big reversal. Didn't stop us out. This week, now so far, big reversal down. Don't know how the week's going to end up, but we're not going to live candle by candle. SHO triggered. Last week, pretty nice move up, did not get anywhere close to the stop. This week, back down, not yet to the trigger point, but back down, testing the base level again. TECK triggered last week up, this week turning back down. We'll see how that one goes. And ONVO was just triggered. This is a pretty substantial down move, and it now did close beyond the close beyond price. So this is an official stop out. This was a quick stop out. So this one is now off the charts. That was a long that got hammered in the down move. That's all we have for you. Back to you, Bob. Thank you, Michael. Sorry about that uh, introductory rant, but every once in a while I see these things and I really think that is doing a disservice to the individual investor to try and make them think that every once in a while they got to check the Baltic Dry Index or sometimes they have to realize that crude is leading. The biggest sell-off today was in the financials. It wasn't in the energies. So tell me why financials sold off so hard, but yet yields barely moved. Well, it's because there was a drip, drip, drip of negative feeling of negative tone to the market, and it finally broke through. Take a piece of paper towel and turn your faucet on drip and just let it drip, drip, drip into it. Eventually, it will break through. There's not always one clear-cut reason. That's why price action's better. Cheers, everyone. We'll talk to you guys in the next Batch Chat.